a song of prayer. mother's womb, O oh Lord, for you fashioned us fearfully and wonderfully, O oh Lord. Even before our substance came, O oh Lord, you knew us, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. So wonderful are you, O oh Lord. So magnificent are you, O oh Lord. So lovely are you, O oh Lord, Jesus Christ. You are beautiful, O oh Lord. You are who you say you are, O oh Lord, Jesus Christ. You Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you, O oh Lord. We bless you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise St. Paul, in his letter to Corinthians, he says this. I'm just going to paraphrase it to you. He says, For all the blessings, salvation, forgiveness of sins, breaking the curses, setting us free, giving us the eternal life, for all of these things, your response should be thanksgiving to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For all the things that He's done, our response should be thanksgiving to God. Then He also says one important thing. When you gather as a church, when you are in a fellowship, when you keep giving thanks to the Lord, what happens is the grace of God will abound, it seems. Hallelujah. The grace of God will abound in the situation. And we know when grace of God comes, there is liberty, there is freedom, there is unmerited favor. Amen. Amen. You believe it? Believe what I said? Amen. Now, couple of you who are here, because of you, somebody else in this gathering today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow or Monday can enjoy the grace of God. I'll tell you how. When you realize personally that Jesus has done fantastic things in my life, your response to what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary should be thanksgiving. Amen? So, who's unable to open their lips because of your prayer, praises, exaltation, that person will be benefited. That is the church. That is the fellowship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So standing there, you can become a minister of God through your praises and through your worship and through your exaltation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you want to have this crown over your head that you are a minister of God? Right? We got the grace, so we are here. The same grace is operating in you also. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So knowing that, as we sing this song, Beautiful One, I want all of you to look at that beautiful Savior, Jesus, and then exalt Him. Amen. Somebody else should come and say that when I came, I was not able to pray and open my lips. But as through the worship, when I exalted Jesus, I felt the grace of God enabling me to pray and worship and to read the Bible and spend time in a, in a prayerful manner in the next coming days. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Come on, let's sing the song, Beautiful One. Come on, clap your hands, everybody.
and my dear sisters and he is pleased to dwell in our praises this evening today here my dear brothers and my dear sisters he is faithful to his word and he said where two three are gathered in my name there I am it means Jesus will move in our midst by faith when we know that he is faithful to his word so we exalt you faithful Lord we praise you Jesus we worship you, O God. We adore you, Jesus. Oh, we glorify you, O Lord. And you open my eyes to the wonders in you. And you capture my heart with this love. As there's nothing on earth is as beautiful as you.
Lord said he did not do in the past, but let us claim and pray. He is going to do mighty things in the next three days, four days, hallelujah. Pray for the consecration. Put your body on the altar today, hallelujah. Tell him I'm giving my body as a holy and acceptable sacrifice to you, hallelujah. We give our bodies to you, O God. Romans chapter 12 of God, verse 1 and 2. As a holy and an acceptable sacrifice, I place my body on the altar today, hallelujah. The Bible says, anything that is on the altar belongs to your Lord. So put your body on the altar today. Put your soul on the altar today. It belongs to Jesus Christ, hallelujah.
worthy to be praised, O oh Lord. We enthrone you, Jesus Christ. We exalt you this evening, O oh God. May your kingship come in our lives, O oh Lord. May your lordship come into our families, O oh Lord. May your kingdom be established in this ministry, in this place, in this service, O oh God. May you rule and reign, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, O oh Lord, and the power, and the glory, and the authority, and the honor forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We worship you. Amen. Yeah. 
sins and even by violating the first commandment and we are carrying this wounds in our spirit and therefore our character has been defined and there, is, there, are, there are infirmities in our behavior, in our personality, even in our attitude. So we may be carrying many bondages or darkness in our attitude, therefore in our character and therefore in our behavior and therefore in our relationships. And we make complaints and we hear complaints by people about us. And all these things you now finally will be defiling the name of the Lord. Because God is our creator, our savior, our, our, our father. And when we are not good, if we are not having that export quality, we are going to be exported to heaven. If we are not having that quality, the name of the Lord, the name of the creator, the company's name will be defiled and despised. So this time, these days, the Lord has given us to prepare ourselves to make a spiritual scanning, a kind of auditing that we know where we are and we can take some deliberate and serious steps and resolutions to correct ourselves and to check our lives whether we are moving in line with the scripture in the, according to the spiritual values of gospel, values that we read in the Gospels and the New Testament books. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So shall we uh, lift up our hands to verse 7 and close our eyes and keep praising the Lord as we praise together. We are going to say the offering prayer and praying all kinds of demonic and diabolic influences and blocks and bondages and works uh, so that there won't be any kind of uh, work of the enemy against our mind, against our sessions against this conference. We go and karabalu shiri ni palapa. Come on, hallelujah. Thank you Lord, we praise you, worship you, Almighty God. Let's put this song, hallelujah. Thank you, Almighty God. We lift up your holy name, we exalt you, Almighty God. Nuri ni puri ni palapa, shahana mari puri ni palapa. Dini ni palapa, shanta rika da baraku di rika da 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 Still louder, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Almighty God. We exalt your name, we exalt you, we lift up your holy name. Come, Jesus Christ, we welcome you, Lord. Set your feet on this ground, Almighty Lord. Enter this world, Almighty Lord. Enter our soul, Almighty Lord. Lord, you reign in our lives, reign in this place. That no one of them may come against us, Almighty Lord. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit go. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost move right now. Let everyone be under the fire of the Holy Spirit of God. We place ourselves and families under the blood of Christ Jesus. 
blood of the new and eternal covenant of the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood the Lord has shed on the cross of Calvary, the blood which breaks and cleanses, the blood which uh, washes us away and cleanses us and uh, removes every kind of sin from our lives. Thank you, Almighty God. We praise you. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Holy, holy, holy is the living God. The one who is, the one who was, the one who is to be. Alpha and Omega. We praise you. Thank you, Almighty God. Reward and Amanama. Shivara and Anadibara Dinam. The Rinka Dinam. The Rana Kudura Dasha and Amanama. Shivara and Anadibara Dasha and Anadibara Dasha and Anadibara Thank you, Father God, we praise you, Lord. Father, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Holy Ghost, we worship you. Lord, we welcome you. Please say a deliberate prayer. Welcome the Lord. And the Son asks us to lead you to the Lord, to the hands of the living God. Praise ourselves under the bread of the Lamb of God of families as well. Hallelujah. And thank you, Almighty God. We praise and glorify your name. We exalt in your mighty. We lift up your holy name. Come, Lord, with your healing power. Touch everyone, Almighty Lord. Release your liberation, Almighty Lord. Release your healing, Almighty Lord. Release your abundant life into your soul, into your spirit, into your body. That no one could the enemy may come against us, Almighty Lord. No gates of hell will prevail against the people of God, Father, here. Thank you, Almighty Lord. We break the power of the enemy. We break the power of all that are demonic and diabolic oppressions and inclusion in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We command every evil one, every demonic power, every diabolic forces to bow down at the name of Christ Jesus according to Philippians 2 9 11 and, and to proclaim that and confess that Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is Yahweh, Jesus is Jehovah, Yeshua is the Lord, Hallelujah. Thank you, Almighty God, we praise you, Lord. We command all the spirit of sicknesses, incurable sicknesses, all kind of nagging voices, all kind of spirits of impurity and unholiness. We command you to bow down. Bow down, bow down, bow down in the name of Christ Jesus, Lord of Allah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Almighty God, we praise you, Lord. We worship Almighty. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you, Lord. Jesus, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord Almighty. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We lift up your holy name, Almighty God. Lord, upon your archangel, Michael and Gabriel and Raphael, Almighty God. Let the heavenly army come down to cover us and protect us. And the Lord, we seek the angel in ministry that uh, we for this center be protected. That all that uh, uh, things belongings here be protected by the fire of the Holy Spirit and God. Thank you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. We glorify your name, Almighty. We worship your creation. Thank you, Almighty. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. Let us close our eyes. Keep your palms on your heart. Speak to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Just say, say a prayer in your heart. Talk to the Lord. Lord, I love you. I worship you, Lord. Come into my soul, into my heart. I give myself to you, Lord. I serve my family, my dear ones, Lord, into your holy and healing hands, Lord. Jesus, please come. We need you. Apart from you, we can't do anything on my soul. Oh, my to save the Lord, the living God, the risen Lord, please come to save us, to, to, to teach us, Lord, to remove every darkness that is there in your mind, Lord, and to all the preconceived ideas and norms and philosophies which are against the teaching of the gospel of Christ Jesus, we are quoted. Lord, help us to unlearn all the things we have learned which are against the gospel against the teaching of the scriptures of Almighty God. Jesus Christ, we want to be under your authority and power. We set our will to your holy and absolute and sovereign will of Almighty God. We place our will under the will of the living God. We subject our will, our personal will, our free will to the, to the sovereign will of the Heavenly Father that we may never turn against God's will. We may never think against God's plan. We may never be trapped by the enemy and his plan. What the enemy has written, we completely uprooted and we cancel and be nullified by the very precious blood of Christ Jesus. What the Lord has written for us and for our families and for our generations will be a totally and completely the authority of the Holy Spirit of God that the Holy Spirit may execute the Holy Spirit 
may execute and implement the plan of God, what the Father has to do for us in our lives through the blood of Christ Jesus, by the merit of the one sword or sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ that He has perfect on the cross of Calvary and through the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Abba, we thank you, Almighty. We praise and glory for your name. Hallelujah. We speak with the blood of Christ upon all my all brothers and sisters here. We speak with the blood of Christ into the into the look and corner of this building of this prayer center, of this retreat center, let the kitchen be under the blood of Christ Jesus, every room, every mattress, every building be under the blood of the Lamb of God. All our dear brothers and sisters here and our children be under the grace and the blood of Christ Jesus. We all be insulated by the blood and the fire of the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Almighty God. Mother Mary, Saint Joseph, all saints, angels of God, intercede for us. Shall we say together, our Father, who art in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, for that trust in this kingdom. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you, Christ of heaven. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be well to the Lord's end. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us see the power will come and go. Don't worry about it. If there is no power, I will come forward and preach without my Don't worry about that also. Praise God. So your whole focus is on the word of God, right? Hallelujah. And the Father has come. He will celebrate the Mass at the right time. And uh, the Lord's Lord is very good to you. So we uh, listen to the first preaching. The topic is the divinity of Jesus Christ. The divinity of Jesus Christ. The divinity of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Why this topic? Uh, you know, sometimes you know, uh, because of the type, the many titles the Lord has um, got. You know, we may be confused about the divinity of Jesus Christ sometimes. But also, he is a uh, historical person. He was part of the secular history. So, uh, sometimes we may think that he, 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 he was a good man, or a revolutionary, or a leader, or a teacher, or he taught the best of the best, the best of morals. We, we, may, uh, we may think so. And sometimes we may discount the divinity of Christ Jesus, the very office of the Lord in heaven and on earth. And sometimes because of the titles Jesus has got, like the Son of God, we may be confused about this word when we look at, uh, at this the dictionary meaning. Rather than you know, with the, the, the biblical meaning, sometimes we look at the title of Christ Jesus, Son of God, and our understanding, our, our understanding we receive from the society or from the dictionary may uh, compel us to think something which is not, which Christ is not. Or degrading the divinity of Christ Jesus, or discounting the, uh, the deity uh, of Christ Jesus, his divinity. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, so, uh, we should see uh, who Christ is really. Then we can uh, you know, solve many questions or confusions and doubts which may come into our mind. Why I am telling this? Why we should know who Christ is really? With all clarity, we may be sometimes thinking this is Christ we have been taught in the catechesis class or in many retreats or in some, some biblical classes and we have heard that, but still we keep some confusion in our mind. And if we have this confusion, our worship will be wrong. If our worship will be wrong, by default of the wrong worship, the enemy can enter in our life. At least in our mental understanding, in our philosophical understanding, in our, in our, in our uh, uh, no, the ideas which we keep may be corrected by a, a wrong understanding about Christ Jesus. Jesus is a, is, is a, is a, is a good teacher, he was a, a good leader, a revolutionary. A social reform. If we keep this thing, he, of course he, he, he was so. 
but that is not Jesus Christ. Then we, can, we may be tempted to equate Christ with, Christ with many leaders of the, of the world, like Mahatma Gandhi or Abraham Lincoln or with Aristotle or Plato or Socrates or some other leaders of the world. And uh, sometimes we may compare uh, Jesus with other leaders and we may say Jesus is the best leader. Or ever, his, ever in the history, no one has seen such a leader like Christ. That is not enough for our salvation, uh, for our freedom, for our liberation. We should have a clear understanding about Christ Jesus. Therefore, I, I start from uh, Jesus' own words. He is asking his listeners to believe some, something about him. So we read now, and one of you also can read from the Bible. Uh, John's Gospel, chapter 8 and verse 24. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, John's Gospel, chapter 8 uh, and verse 24. And I would read like this. Listen carefully. If you have not turned the pages of the Bible, just write down the reference. Close your Bible now. Then just listen to this uh, reading. Uh, write down the reference. John, St. John's Gospel, chapter 8 and verse 24, Jesus says, I told you that, Jesus is telling, I told you that you would die in your sins, for you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am He. Unless you believe that I am. I am He. You will die in your sins. Jesus told them, told them that you would die in your sins unless you believe that I am he. What should be our faith about Jesus? How do we look into Jesus Christ? I told you that if you don't believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So a person will be dying in his sins unless he believes in that believes that Jesus is I am. I am. I am He. Praise God. Hallelujah. What is the meaning of I am? Jesus' language is not English. Jesus' language is not uh, uh, Kannada or Tamil or Malayalam or any other. In these languages, His language is Aramaya. It is a variant of, it is a Judah uh, Palestinian variant of Hebrew. Hebrew. So we can say it is equal to Hebrew. It is not exactly Hebrew, but it is almost Hebrew. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is a Judah Palestinian Hebrew. It's a variant of Hebrew. And it is called Aramaya. Hallelujah. That is the mother tongue of Jesus and Mary and Saint Joseph and all, the disciples of Christ. And in this language, Jesus speaks. And he says, If you don't believe that, I am. Hallelujah. So the I am in Hebrew is Yahweh. In English, we say Jehovah. Hallelujah. An equivalent word for Yahweh in Hebrew or in the Hebrew of uh, Judaism, the, in the faith of Judaism, is Adonai. Adonai is an equivalent fer- word for uh, Yahweh. Why? Yahweh, the commandment of the Lord is that you should not use, put my name in vain. Right? So they won't use usually the name of the Lord Yahweh in their daily life. Instead of Yahweh, they will be using an equivalent word that they have developed, which is called Adonai, which is equal to the Master. Or in English, the Lord. The capital letter L, O, R, D, the Lord. Hallelujah. In, in, in our vernacular, in our vernacular, or in our Indian languages, we say Prabhu. Hallelujah. The Lord. Or Swami. The Lord. Right? It is equal to Master. Hallelujah. Adonai. Adonai is a substitute for Yahweh. Right. Okay. This much you got, right? Because we will be using the word Adonai in other preachings also, in other classes also. You should not uh, lose the meaning of it. Adonai is just equal to Yahweh. So Yahweh. So if you don't believe that I am Yahweh or I I am, I am He, I am who I am, I am what I am, Yahweh, you will die in your sins. What is the consequence of sin? The wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23. Hallelujah. Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death. And God said to Adam and Eve, The day you eat the forbidden fruit, you will 
die and also the same thing we can see in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 they were dead because of their transgressions Ephesians 2 2 hallelujah praise the lord Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 praise so the death is the consequence of or the fruit of or the result of or the wages of sin what is sin is is equal to death what is death then that is absence of life so you will lose your life when you sin what is a sin if you don't believe that i am hallelujah so shall we go to uh, 16 8 of same gospel john's gospel chapter 16 and verse 8 hallelujah john's gospel chapter 16 and verse 8 john's gospel and chapter 16 and verse 8 what it what it says like this and when the holy spirit comes he will convince the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment about sin because they do not believe in me so what is the sin the holy spirit will convince the world about sin because they do not believe in me hallelujah so what should be our faith when we look into jesus when we hear about jesus when we come to jesus we should believe in him but what should be our faith we should believe that jesus is yahweh so we club together these two verses 824 and 16 and 8 when we read together are you getting it when you read together 824 and 16 8 when we read together 16 8 and 9 the holy spirit will convince you about sin because you do not they do not the world does not believe in me hallelujah praise the lord so what is the sin unbelief and believe in Christ in Jesus and the world should believe in Jesus how that he is yahweh unless you believe that i am he i am yahweh you should die in your sins what is sin unbelief what is unbelief that jesus the belief is jesus is god jesus is yahweh so the unbelief is that jesus is not yahweh or god praise the lord hallelujah so our faith should be very clear according to jesus christ teaching because sometimes jehovah witnesses you might have heard about jehovah witnesses yeah you heard about the islam community muslims yeah they would say where did jesus say that i am god and you worship me show me in bible where did jesus say hallelujah i am god and worship me yes Jesus said beyond god anyone can say i am god and many are in the jail also many said i am god and god us and now many of them are in the jail and some are on the way to the jail praise god hallelujah jesus said even beyond that jesus not only said i am god he said beyond that see he is not simply saying god he is very clear about that divinity he said i am yahweh god Yahweh God means the true God, the only God, the God of the Bible, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, God of Moses, God of Joshua, God of David, God of the the people of the books. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! So simply saying God is said one thing, and Jesus is telling beyond that God. This is very clearly he is telling, I am Yahweh. not only here in many places so before mass i am only focusing on the title of yahweh for christ in the bible uh, when we read together the old testament as well as the new testament so be careful listen carefully you should receive this truth and teach your children your family members with all boldness in your parish even sometimes you have to preach or you have to teach teach them write down the references it is in the bible it is in the bible it is not my bible or your bible it is the bible of the church hallelujah this is the bible has been handed over to us by the apostles and the apostle fathers hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord so what is the sin what is the sin unbelief if you don't don't believe in jesus that is the sin why what is then we should know sin is not sins sin is not sins 
sin is the reason to commit sins sin is a state sin is not at all the singular of sins hallelujah are you, are you getting me okay what is you know sins right what is a, a, a singular of sins sin and this sin is not that sin sin which is the singular of sins hallelujah sin is singular of sins but this sin is not that singular of sin this is a state this is the state of our soul our spirit is a death is equal to death what is death absence of life where the spirit which life the life which will be enabling us to live in the world to come to live here we don't need life in the spirit only life in the body and the soul is enough life in the body life in the mind or soul is enough to live here but life in the spirit is in a, is necessary is mandatory to live in the world to come are you getting me hallelujah even if your mind is not operating or working you can sleep and you can be alive when you sleep in deep sleep your mind is not operating not not, not working but you are there is life in the spirit correct but still you are alive hallelujah right praise the lord and and suppose we we sleep you know we take the sleep of death but the spirit will be alive if we have the life in the spirit if we have life in the spirit even though the mind is not operating when we have the deep sleep but our heart is working the blood is being pumped or our brain is also working sometimes hallelujah our lungs are working correct hallelujah the physics is working right so our mind is not that operative just like that hallelujah uh, when, when 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 we have the life in the spirit even though the body is in the mud we have been we are we are buried but if there is life in the spirit the body's life is not a must to uh, must to move to the other world and leave the spirit lives there in the world to come in the, in the eternity in heaven praise god hallelujah so the life in the spirit is must for us to live in the world to come or the, to enjoy the heavenly life or the eternal life hallelujah so jesus focus is that jesus focus is that so sisters and brothers you keep in our let us keep in our mind about the life to come and jesus is teaching about that hallelujah praise the lord jesus is the the door the door of heaven jesus is the way to heaven jesus is the giver of life that is the reason jesus say i am the truth i am the way and i am the life and we should say i am the true life giving way i am the true life giving way jesus is the truth jesus is the life jesus is the way hallelujah so jesus gives us which life the life that will be enabling us to live in the world to come so this life is, should be there in our spirit so our spirit should be active so this is more than a, a mental understanding hallelujah this this should we should this we should take in by our spirit our 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 conscience our soul hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah shall we go to uh, this is jesus word right and uh, and uh, and isaiah chapter 40 and verses verse 3 Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 3 I go slowly Somebody can read if you have opened the bible please read or I should go and read Right I repeat to the mic a voice cries in the wilderness prepare the way of the lord you please keep your eyes on the word lord you see in the word lord l o r d right is capital letter l yeah right got it right so what is there in the uh, hebrew bible for the word lord what is the hebrew word there in the hebrew bible the original bible the original language of isaiah what is the word for lord there yahweh yahweh so i should uh, 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 
substitute the word lord with uh, yahweh in the wilderness prepare the way of the of the of yahweh of yahweh so prepare the way of yahweh make straight in the desert a highway for our god elohim so a highway for our god so both are about a single person but two way it is being qualified the person is being qualified as yahweh and god so prepare a, a voice cries in the desert what that um the uh, prepare the way of yahweh make a straight in the desert a highway for our god so this yahweh and our uh, yahweh and god are one and the same person and this prophecy is all about whom this prophecy is all about whom john the baptist no the voice which cries in the desert is the voice of john the baptist right when we read matthew st matthew's gospel chapter 3 and verses 1 to 3 we'll be getting the uh, uh, understanding this this voice which cries in the desert is the voice of the voice of st john the baptist so this prophecy is all about first part is all about st john the baptist hallelujah so there there comes a voice in the desert what the voice says prepare the way of yahweh and a highway for our god so st john the baptist is trailing prepare a, prepare the way of yahweh and also a highway for our god and who is this yahweh and god who is the yahweh and god jesus christ so john the baptist is the forerunner he prepares the way for yahweh and god that is who jesus he is a forerunner of jesus hallelujah hallelujah so john the baptist says that we should prepare the way of yahweh and a highway for our god so who is jesus who is jesus when we read together isaiah chapter 40 and verse 3 as well as saint matthew's gospel chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 we get the very important truth about christ jesus who is jesus according to isaiah 40 and 3 and matthew 3 1 to 3 who is jesus yahweh and god so yahweh is god and this god is yahweh and this god is now in human form a jesus of nazareth is yahweh and god jehovah and god jesus of nazareth is god and he is jehovah jesus of nazareth is jehovah in human form god in human form in short we should say jesus is the incarnation of god Jesus is the incarnate God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the title Yahweh or Jehovah and God now is applied for Jesus by the scripture Old Testament and the New Testament scripture. The authors of the scripture and then the Isaiah and Matthew both uh, said together that Jesus is God and Jesus is Jehovah. Jehovah's incarnation. praise god hallelujah so when we look into jesus christ we should not think anything else about christ jesus our our faith should be very clear he is jehovah he is god then only we can worship him without any doubt without any confusion then only we can avoid false worship if jesus is jehovah and god we can we should worship him we can worship him and also we can avoid false worship idol worship we can avoid worshiping false gods small letter g o d gods and goddesses so only through the, the the true faith we can come out from we can abstain from the sin of idol worship the sin of worshiping false gods the sin of worshiping false goddesses the sin of worshiping all kind of deities which have been designed by the founders of religions praise god hallelujah now we are going to see um, 
the, the title Yahweh Jehovah for again Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. See, um, when we think about and meditate on the name Yahweh Jehovah, and when this is uh, attributed to Jesus of Nazareth in the New Testament, our understanding and our inference should be like this: that the God of the of the Bible of the Old Testament, the Creator in Genesis one, that same God is now with us in the form of Jesus of Nazareth, or in the in the in the in the in, the, in, the, in, in Jesus of Nazareth, God dwelt, God embodied, God tented. Tabernacled, tabernacled in Jesus of Nazareth, in the body of Jesus of Nazareth, there dwelt the eternal God, the infinite God, the God of all universe. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is the reason John's Gospel chapter 1 and 14 says, God tabernacled, the word tabernacled and, and dwelt among us. In the, with the modern English we say the, law, the, the, the word became flesh. It is not became flesh. It is tabernacled. God dwelt among us. God tabernacled in flesh and he dwelt among us. Praise God. Hallelujah. So as we, when we, when we, so we have already seen that John's Gospel 24 is all about uh, uh, the two names of Jehovah and uh, the proper name and the common name God. We can see here. And now, uh, let us see what the Holy Spirit says about uh, Jesus Christ using the title Jehovah, Yahweh. Uh, and St. Luke's Gospel, and chapter 1, and verse 43. Uh, we know the background of this. Um, Mother Mary visits um, Elizabeth, and uh, Elizabeth uh, is um, greeting Mother Mary. And uh, that is the context. Okay. Uh, verse 42 says, And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And then Elizabeth continues, And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? The mother of the Lord should come to me. So the Lord, Elizabeth is not speaking in Greek. Because the original language of the, say, Luke's gospel is the Greek. Greek Greek is the original language. In Greek, St. Luke wrote this gospel. And uh, Elizabeth uh, is not using English or any other language. That is also Aramea. That is the mother tongue. A Judo-Palestinian, a Greek a Hebrew version. That is Aramea we have already seen. And she is not using the word Lord or anything. But she is using the word the equivalent in, in Greek, uh, the equivalent word for Lord is Kyrios. Kyrios is equal to Adonai, which is equal to Yahweh. So we should read it like this. And why is this granted me that the mother of my Jehovah, my Yahweh, should come to me? Praise God. Hallelujah. We are, uh, if you have uh, the Bible with you, just look at verse 43 and we should reread it like this. And why is this granted me that the mother of my Jehovah, my Yahweh, should come to me? Praise God. So, the mother of Jehovah. Who is the mother of Jehovah here? Mother Mary. So, who is there in the womb of Mother Mary? Blessed be the fruit of your womb. And then she continues that, that the mother of my Jehovah, mother of my Jehovah, mother of my Jehovah, Jehovah, in incarnation, in incarnation, Jesus is Jehovah or Jehovah's incarnation is Jesus. Now, Jesus is in Mother Mary's womb. So, Mother Mary is the mother of Jesus. Jesus is Jehovah. So, mother of Jehovah. It's not the creator of Jehovah. Mother doesn't mean that it's a creator. My mother is not my creator. Neither your mothers are not your creators. Nor our, fa our fathers also. Praise the Lord. Mother doesn't mean creator. Father doesn't mean creator. It's only a tool in the hands of the absolute creator God. That is the reason, what is the message of a, 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 a barren womb? A barren womb says that, says that mother is not the creator. 
importance he says that father is not the creator creator is god but 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 women conceive what does it mean god is the creator in his design a, a woman can conceive in 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 god's design not with the solar energy in god's design they will be, they will become one god in in the in the beginning god created them as man and woman male and female and they will become one and they will be blessed with children this is god's plan praise god hallelujah so in god's plan things will happen and god is the creator mother is not the creator father is not at all the creator therefore mother mary is not the creator of jesus jesus has created even mother mary but here in this process of incarnation now jesus was so humbled himself and he accepted mary's womb to be born as a child or a baby and come into this world praise god hallelujah or god doesn't do anything in this world without the help of man because man has been given the authority over the earth adam you know we know genesis 128 to 30 Genesis 1:28 to 30 says Adam was given authority over the creation so whatever god wants to do he does through human you know you know people of god or uh, through man only man means woman also praise god hallelujah so here in incarnation also god is using or god is also participating god is also making use of or using the help of or or taking the help of uh, uh, the man or the woman uh, even in writing the bible also god is not simply giving a book to us from sky from earth or from heaven god is using the authors of the scripture and the holy spirit is inspiring them the holy spirit is working on one hand the other hand the lord is using people of god in the same way mother mary is used by the holy spirit to bring forth jesus the flesh or the bodily form of jehova got it Hallelujah praise the Lord so Luke's gospel 143 says Jesus is Jehovah and therefore we should again believe that God Jesus is God himself God himself so as we discuss and debate and and and, and meditate on the the topic uh, the divinity of Jesus Christ the bible says the old testament says and the new testament says that Jesus is Jehovah therefore he is God and this and because jesus is god now jesus of nazareth nazareth is the incarnation of god god became flesh god became flesh praise god hallelujah hallelujah so uh, jesus said i am jehova in roman in in, in john 824 we have already seen and also holy spirit is now mother elizabeth is inspired by the holy spirit of god and she is uh, crying out that you are the mother of jehovah so the holy spirit is also telling that jesus is jehovah hallelujah and in the old testament isaiah is making a prophecy that we have already seen that jesus is jehovah and god jehovah is god jehovah and god two titles are being used for jesus in isaiah 40 and 3 praise god hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord So another title for Jehovah uh, uh, that we see in the Old Testament is Ancient of Days. Ancient of Days. Ancient of Days means uh, God without beginning. That is the Hebrew term for God. Ancient of Days. In two places we can see this word in the Bible. That is one is in 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 Daniel's book chapter seven and verse thirteen. The second is uh, the book of Micah or Micah chapter five and verse two. Shall we go to Micah chapter five and verse two? is a minor prophet but you o bethlehem ephrata who are little to be among the clans of juda from you shall come forth come for me one who is to be ruler in israel whose origin is from old from ancient of days his origin is from of old from ancient of days the same ancient of days i uh, know uh, title is used for god the father in hallelujah in in, in then uh, daniel daniel 7:13 also daniel 7:13 also praise god hallelujah um, who is displaying is brother freddy 
Yeah, who? Yeah, Moses. Daniel 7, Daniel 7, 13 and 14 also, I think. Now, um, should we see it? Bethlehem Ephrata, the last part, whose origins are from of old, from ancient of times, ancient of days or ancient of times. This is a Hebrew expression. Uh, when we examine very critically the English language, we may be confused sometimes, but this is the translation of Hebrew expression. Hebrew expression Alpha and Omega is not, see, what is the translation Alpha and Omega? The beginning and the end. What does it mean? A very critical text, beginning and end. But in Hebrew, the meaning is not that, without beginning and end. But in English, it is only that much, how much? Beginning and end. The end. The beginning, the end. What does it mean? It's not, see, it's not, not God's beginning or God's end. God only began everything. So God only caused everything. He is without cause but caused everything. He is the reason for every effect. This multiverse or the universe, whatever we see or experience, whatever is in existence, is because of God. He is the first cause, without cause. But you bet... Uh, Daniel 7.13 or 14? Yeah. In my vision, Daniel says, I looked uh, and there before me was one like a son of man. Even before the incarnation of Jesus Christ, when Dan <coughs> Daniel sees a heavenly vision, in that vision, before in the incarnation of Jesus Christ, Jesus comes as a son of man. That is the reason Jesus Christ is using this son of man title for himself in the New Testament. In the Gospels, we can see that Jesus is telling that the Son of Man will come in the glory, you know, in, in clouds, will be glorified, right? The Son of Man, I am, the, I, am, I am also a Son of Man. My father is a man. So I am also a Son of Man. But the Son of Man in, in, in Daniel 7.13 is different. In the Bible is different. When Jesus uses the word Son of Man, it is different, totally different. What does it mean? This is all about the incarnation of God. So God, when God is seen in heaven, He is seen as a man. Why? Because He would become man. Daniel sees Jesus Christ even before His incarnation in a man's form. It's a prophetic vision. It is not the present tense vision, it is a prophetic vision. In Daniel's vision, something which would happen in future is shown to him. Hallelujah. So, uh, uh, a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. So, many times Jesus is using this phrase. Uh, the son of man comes in glory and in clouds and like. This is cloud is not that cloud in that we see in the sky. Cloud means the company of saints. The communion of saints in the Bible calls, which is called clouds. Clouds means not the cloud which we see on in the sky, but the cloud here means the communion of saints. Communion of saints. The souls of the righteous people, which is called clouds of uh, heaven. Oh, together with the, uh, angels. He approached the ancient of days. So, so who approached? The Son of Man approached the ancient of days. So this is a hint about the Holy Trinity, even in the Old Testament. And Father God is appearing as ancient of days here. Jesus Christ is appearing as the Son of Man here. And who is giving the vision? Hold the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is giving the vision to Daniel uh, where Father God is seen as ancient of days and Jesus Christ is described as Son of Man. So the, the, we can have that uh, the, the, the particles of Trinity even in the Old Testament. Praise God. But we will be getting the full picture when we read the Old Testament together with the New Testament uh, revelations and expressions. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we will, if the time permits, we will get, uh, we will have a, uh, you know, some, some, some message on the Holy Trinity also. Why God should be Holy Trinity. Hallelujah. So when we, uh, when we understand why God should be Holy Trinity, then easily we can come to a conclusion that anything other than Holy Trinity is a fake God. So idol worship is that what any worship other than the Holy Trinity worship is idol worship. Whether it is with, two idol, with an idol or without an idol. With an idol or without an idol, if somebody worships a God which is not Trinity, then it is an idol worship. Because this man is designing a God. That the God is not Holy Trinity, not the Creator. This is a created God. So a God cannot be created. 
so if we create a god other than the holy trinity the real creator then that is idol worship i think you are getting me can you praise god hallelujah so now ancient of days now we see here also in mika chapter 5 to the ancient of days is seen for christ jesus that jesus christ is is, is going to be born in bethlehem this is a prophecy of by prophet uh, mika hallelujah praise the lord a mary and joseph joseph were from nazareth bethlehem is about 80 kilometers away from nazareth then why they came there not searching for a, a hospital and a gynecologist no they 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 left nazareth for a reason and they landed up in bethlehem for a reason so how beautifully the prophet is uh, you know making this prophecy right why mary and joseph left nazareth for jerusalem and bethlehem is on the way because of augustus caesar and his order or command for census then they left they left to bethlehem no jerusalem on the way bethlehem then they then mother mary developed uh, the labor pain why then bethlehem so holy spirit saw this in advance and why bethlehem what is the meaning of the bethlehem bethel means house bethlehem means uh, uh, bread this is house of bread jesus christ is the bread for the world so the, the bread of life the bread for the world should be born in the house of bread, bread. that is bethlehem okay that is a different thing so my dear sisters and brothers this is divinity of christ another one more wonderful thing is there if time permits we will discuss later that is in micah chapter 4 and verse 8 so uh, wonderful this is all about watch tower hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah hallelujah okay now um how how does uh, father god address uh, jesus christ we only know that jesus is father god is calling him son of my beloved son no right before that father addressed jesus christ in a very special way yeah that we are going to see now uh in 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 hebrews chapter 1 and verse 6 then we will read verse 8 hebrews chapter 1 okay before that we i have just read verse 2 Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 just read then i go to verse 6 but in these last days he has spoken to us by a, by his son whom he appointed the heir of all things through whom also he created the ages so all creation has taken place through christ jesus then we come to verse 6 so the, the the god the father says to something to the angels and god the father says and again when he brings the firstborn into the world he says god says let all god's angels worship him god the father says let all god's angels worship him whom the firstborn is introduced to the world that is jesus christ when the first what is the means firstborn not one who not does it mean that the one who was born first firstborn means The, 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 the master of everyone who is born first born it is not based on the time but based on the position first can be by time and by position correct so suppose you know, somebody sits in the front we can say he sits first right and in time also somebody can be first my brother has my elder brother is born first then i i, I am born so in time there can be first in position also there can be first so the first born doesn't mean with the time but with position positionally jesus is superior to everything that has been created that that that, that is the meaning of first born it doesn't mean with the time no connection with the time jesus christ not by base not by time jesus is the first born but by position jesus is the first born which means Jesus is superior or leader or master or the ruler of everything that has been born or created that is the meaning of the word first born in the bible in the bible praise god so when jesus was introduced means the leader of the creation the master of the creation 
the ruler of the creation when he was introduced when he was brought into the world god the father says let all god's angels worship him why because jesus is worthy of being worshiped why jesus is worthy of being worshiped because he is god only god deserves worship and god the father says angels you worship jesus christ even though he is in the in human form jesus was worshiped in heaven angels would worship him but mom, mom, there could be some doubt in the mind of the angels when jesus is a man now in his incarnation is a man how a man can be worshiped that is the reason god the father says no even though he is in the form of man all angels should worship him because he is covering only man he is really god praise god so yeah let all god's angels worship him so jesus is worthy of being worshiped and he is god that is the reason he is worshiped god commands his angels to worship jesus christ and verse 8 we read but about the son for the, of the son he father says if you have the bible you look at that verse inverted comma see the inverted comma right then all the commas there you should watch you you are thrown comma o god is for ever and ever god the father says you are thrown o god so if god the father is calling addressing jesus as god god the father is addressing jesus as god or fa- god the father calls jesus o god your thr- throne is for ever and ever so we n- need not you uh, know uh, look for uh, any other certificate god himself father god himself calls jesus christ as god and he says your throne throne means god's throne is for ever and ever hallelujah praise the lord so we shouldn't have any confusion when we see, see the word throne is in our language throne doesn't mean that god want god needs a chair to sit god has no body god doesn't need any throne to sit god is getting tired so he is to he wants to sit like sister needy sits no it's not like that it 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 is it is it is shows the authority it is the throne shows the authority it is not a chair it is a throne throne shows a, 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 the authority which doesn't mean that god needs a chair when he gets tired and he is getting tired no nothing he cannot get tired hallelujah but uh, uh, then he, bible says god sits which means god reigns god rules god is cool know that no uh, be 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 uh, what it is psalm 46:10 uh, psalm 46:10 i just uh, missed it um uh be still yeah be still and know that you, uh, i am your god that, that 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 stillness of god very cool no tension no anxiety no bp god is so cool that does mean god sits god sits means aram se god is so cool still uh, uh, be still and know that i am god so that stillness in god's throne or in god's thing is Uh, 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 is god sits god sits and you know, god jesus sleeps no father said in the in, in, in that uh, boat in the boat no jesus was sleeping no aram says jesus is sleeping no right yeah the outside wind and storm and everything was there but cool so god is always cool so pray hallelujah we are not cool huh? praise god and here uh, your throne of god is forever and ever Uh, the, the the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom righteousness righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom scepter that is the authority god is just god a righteous god and his righteousness should come to our life also so we should reflect god's jesus righteousness in our life then only we can say that we are worshiping the righteous hallelujah praise god so when we worship god we should we we, we should receive ida ida particles of his attributes the taste of his article at, uh, attributes 
the essence of his attributes praise god hallelujah because he is the truth when we worship the truth we should be truthful and trustworthy and faithful if a believer cannot be believed he is not at all a believer hallelujah if a believer is not at all faithful the faith is not faith it is something else praise god hallelujah so you just write down some bible references because the time is 10 o'clock i am to stop but there are still many many verses would which would say about the divinity of christ jesus one or two verses also i should read then i close the philippians 2 6 to 8 the book of philippians chapter 2 there are many there are many um, where is philippians philippians chapter 2 and uh, 6 to 8 Though Jesus was in the form of Though Jesus was in the form of God Jesus was in the form of God I should read this being in every nature in, every, in very nature God did not consider okay that is not that great language I would read from my bible who though NRSV is there Moses who though Jesus though he was in the form of God what was his form? He was in the form of God. When? Before incarnation. Before be becoming man. Jesus was in the form of God. So who was Jesus? Or who is Jesus? God. He was in the form of God. Did not count e e equality with God. So he was equal with God. He did not count equality with God. What does it mean? He was equal with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. He did not count equality with God which means that he was equal with God the Father and God the Spirit. With God a thing to be grasped but emptied himself otherwise he cannot become, he could not become a, 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 a man. Man is a created being unless he empties himself he cannot become. So he emptied or lowered himself taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of man and being found in human form he was in god's form now in human form in invisible time uh, invisible his invisible form is god's form his visible form is man's form human form so jesus christ really has got two forms the invisible form is god's form in the eternity in heaven and in an incarnation, he has got human form which is visible. So, can God be seen? Yes, God can be seen in the incarnate Jesus. That is the reason 14.9 says to Philip in John's Gospel, Anyone who sees me, O Philip, sees my father. Anyone who sees me, sees? No idea? Father, yeah. Praise God. No idea, right? Only Vodafone. Right, okay. Now, where it is? Uh, humbled himself and became obedient unto death, ever death on a cross. So why he uh, took the form of a human? Why he, why he, why he emptied himself? Because he uh, is to die on the cross. He, uh, he, he, he became obedient unto death. Even death on a cross. Obedient means humbled. Obedience means humbleness. When we obey, when we obey somebody, I am ready to obey me, which means I accept your authority, I respect you, tell me I will obey. Humbleness. So he became obedient unto death means he humbled himself unto death. Where? On the cross. Praise God. And again, uh, you know, they were thrown, I, the, don't forget. It's very interesting. Revelation chapter 7. Can I take five minutes more? This five minutes will be coming many times. Yeah. Uh, you see, seven seventeen. last verse in the Bible, the book of, not in the Bible, Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. For very, very interesting thing. Uh, I will ask a question also after the, reading this. Yeah. For the Lamb of the... For, for the Lamb... At the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. 
and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So there is a word throne. Throne is our key word here. All right? Yeah. Uh, what we understand here, where Jesus is sitting, in the center of the throne. What does it mean? In my Bible, the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. He, Jesus is sitting in the uh, mid, middle or the center of the throne. What does it mean? Somebody is on the left and somebody is on the right. But only single throne. But only single throne. There is only one throne for God or one God, one authority, supreme, absolute, one God, one throne, one authority. But in this throne, there are three persons, one God, and Jesus is in the center. Somebody is on the right, somebody is on the left. Who is at the left of Jesus? God the Father. Because Jesus is on the right of the Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who is on the right of, the whole, uh, of Jesus Christ? The Holy Spirit. Praise God. So when we, were, when we are kneeling down before the throne of God, we are worshipping, we cannot avoid worshipping the Holy Trinity. There is only one single throne. If, if the worship is in truth and spirit, when we kneel down to worship God, God of the Bible, the worship goes to the Holy Trinity, we cannot avoid it. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. That is the reason I said, the true worship is worshipping of the most holy trinity. Any other worship is idol worship. Any other worship is idol worship. Therefore, sisters and brothers, an idol worship will open a doorway for Satan. If we had worshipped any idea other than the most holy trinity, with or without the, an idol or form, it is an idol worship. We have already opened a door for the enemy. We need healing and deliverance. We need liberation. We should cut off every that idea which would work, which would which 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 had worked as an, an idol, and that should be cut off. That should be cancelled from our lives. And behind every idol, one or more demons are keeping authority. So, and these demons can be named also, and many times the demons are named after God's name. Many other small letter G O D S, small letter G O D S or G, small letter G O D. ESS, right? Spelling is correct. Goddess, double D or single D? Double D. Ah, you know English, right? Praise God. So, this small letter G God or small letter G Goddesses are uh, the names and uh, demons are named after these such, such so-called gods and goddesses. Praise God. That is the reason all the man-gods are in the jail now. Praise God. And now, uh, finally, uh, not finally in the sense, today, Finally, we read um, uh, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. In John's gospel, now in every chapter we can see the divinity of Jesus Christ. If not in every verse. Thick. Thick. And uh, 9, 6. Um, book of Isaiah. Um, chapter 9 and verse 6. We read like this. Um, um, there is... Yes, for to us a child is born. A child is born. See, a child is born. What does it mean? It's not a child is created. A child is born. Is born. And together with that, a son is given. So the, 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 so, so the child is also given only. The child is born because son, the son is given. The child is son and is given. Is given. Is given child. It is not a created child. And the government will be on his shoulders, his single, his shoulders. And he will be called, or he should be called, Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor is the, is the title for the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Mighty God. Everlasting Father is the title for Father, God the Father in the New Testament. But here, see, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Shalom. Shalom. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is the reason Colossians 2 9, is, 9 says that Jesus is the fullness of the deity of God, embodied. 
the fullness of the deity of god has been embodied in jesus christ the fullness of god so where the fullness of god wonderful counselor the holy spirit mighty god and everlasting father both for the god the father and the prince of peace hallelujah so sisters and brothers that is colossians 2:9 says uh, jesus is the fullness of deity of god in an embodied form embodied form in a in a, in a bodily form bodily form praise god hallelujah so jesus is god in the old testament book says new testament book says jesus says holy spirit says father god says saint peter says saint matthew says jesus was uh, accepted worship while he was in the world he accepted worship the three wise men worship jesus matthew 2:11 hallelujah luke 4:50 uh, so luke 24:52 the apostles worship jesus christ he accepted the worship so jehovah witness and islam muslim people would say where jesus and uh, received worship yes jesus was received while he was a baby he received worship before just before his ascension he uh, uh, he received worship all throughout his life he was he received worship sisters and brothers jesus is god hallelujah praise the lord so then why is he is called the son of god two verses are there for son of god one is homogeneous and other is huvis both means of the same nature of the same essence it is not in our dictionary meaning son doesn't mean that son son in the bible for jesus christ means of the same genus homogeneous hallelujah so he, he uh, behold my beloved son what does it mean what does it mean it is not god's child it is means in my own in the same essence of the same essence of mine same nature same essence hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah so i would say like this so what does the, the the biblical meaning of the title or the word for christ jesus son of god what does it mean son of god it is not god's child god's son god has no children biological children. no biology also with god god has no body no god has no hormone god has no nothing like he is transsexual the sex is with us with for, for us only god is beyond all that he is spirit being he is spirit being is eternal god so god's son mean, doesn't mean that god has got a son no god's son of god means son of god means of the same a uh, nature or essence or genus of god what is what is uh, uh, was a ring of god what is the meaning of the word ring of god or a chain of gold you know ring you know yeah ring of gold not god gold g o l d sona huh a ring which is made of god a ring which is gold gold right so son of god means son who is god which means man who is god of the same nature of the same essence this man or this son or this incarnation or this homogeneous uh, 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 reflection or manifestation of god is is of the same essence and nature of god which means it's nothing but god son of god means nothing but god son of god means incarnated god god in human form so the the meaning of the word son of god in the bible is this that god in human form or god's incarnation hallelujah it is not god's child it is not god's son that is the reason jesus is called immanuel what is immanuel god with us god with us that is son of god son of god is equal to god with us god in human form god in human form the who the human or the man who is the same essence and nature of god is called the son of god got it praise the lord hallelujah so shall we stand in the presence of the lord okay two three questions who is god 
come on everyone anyone shout jehovah is god who is jehovah god of the bible right when jehovah became man he is called jesus christ so who is jesus jehovah who is jehovah jehovah is god then who is jesus then who is not god if you can give the answer you can go the first anyone who says the answer and go worship him and go prodigy four lines worship worship four line yeah, yeah. after introducing god we should not uh, leave this place without worshiping him right yeah who is not god anything and anyone other than jesus is not god who is not god anything and anyone other than jesus christ is not god who is not god anything and anyone other than the most holy trinity is god got it hallelujah so what is idol worship then any worship other than offered to the holy trinity is idol worship with or without an idol without with or without an idol if you worshiping a god concept which is not most holy trinity that is idol worship there could be idol there could not be an idol praise god so the, in 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 every religion there is idol worship the, the, you know one question sub question by the time prophet will be getting will be ready which is the religion where idol worship is mandatory there is a religion in the world idol worship is mandatory compulsory you know the religion islam islam is the only single religion on the face of the earth where idol worship is mandatory the crescent and the back stone in the qibla at mecca that should be worshiped so keep in your mind and teach your children most islam is the only single religion on the face of the earth where the idol worship is mandatory in hinduism there is idol worship but there is worship without idols also praise god hallelujah you may raise your eyebrow better raising eyebrow praise god hallelujah so shall we if we can kneel down kneel down otherwise stand keep your eyes closed worship the holy trinity god the father son and the holy spirit in truth and spirit the lord is going to heal many people now the god is going to touch many people now many of the chains are going to be broken now the families are going to be liberated receive this truth receive this truth and manifest the faith and jehovah is to be worshiped yahweh yeshua is to be worshiped yeshua is the aramaic word for jesus the aramaic word for jesus is yeshua yeshua in hebrew is yehoshua which means yahweh my savior so jesus the literal meaning of the word jesus in Hebrew form is Jehovah my shape
divine presence. Feel the presence of the Lord here. Enjoy the presence of the Most Holy Trinity, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Embrace the Lord. Worship Him. Lord, here I am. Your daughter. Your son. Your child. Lord, I commit my life. My family. My dear ones. Totally and completely. Into your hands. Lord, what I say, I mean. Amen. Lord, please accept me. Here I am, Lord. I, I, I enslave me to you. To your authority. Come, reign in me, Lord. You are the great I am, Yahweh, Jehovah. Yahweh, Jesus. Together with the angels of God, with the communion of saints in heaven and in the church, Lord, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we worship you. Lord, it's a healing and abundant life. Grace and presence enter my spirit, my soul, and my body, and my family, Lord. Lord, bless me with good rest, good sleep, increase my health, increase my faith, increase my understanding, because you are my God, and I am your child. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. God bless you. celebrated as Thanksgiving Mass by Maxi and family and Thanksgiving Mass to Divine Mercy by Devati, Teresa and family. For these intentions, today's Mass will be celebrated. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm really very happy to know once again in this center this renewal retreat is taking place because of corona some of this renewal program was not taking place in this center once again God has given this opportunity to continue the renewal program renewal spiritual program in this center This is very important for each one of us. Every day we are busy with our own occupations, different types of activities, and we don't have much time to spend with the Lord. 
and to reflect about our life our life with the lord and our life with the neighbor and our life within ourselves which means our life in the family these are very important not only for the priest and nuns priest and nuns we have annual retreat every year every month we have recollections confessions and so on but it is also important to everyone those who lead the family life and today in a very special way we will be listening the gospel reading which speaks about the marriage divorce and the family life today let us offer all the families gathered here to the care and protection of our lord jesus christ it is god who has brought together the couples the husband and wife the family and so it is necessary to offer ourselves to god for his protection and blessing today during this holy eucharist let us pray for all the families those who are going to come those who are here today and those who are going to come to attend this renewable program as we prepare to celebrate this holy eucharist let us be really sorry for the sins that we have committed especially the sins that we have committed against the will of god and against the fidelity of the family life let us be sorry for all these sins and ask the lord pardon and strength I confess to Almighty God and to, and to my brothers and sisters, and sisters that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, words in what, what I have done, done and in what, what I failed to do, through, through my faults, through my, my faults, through my, my previous faults. faults. Therefore, Therefore, I ask the Lord to forgive all the angels and, all the and saints, and, saints and, and to my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to your lasting life. Amen. Amen. Saint Jane Frances de Chantal, radiant with outstanding merits in different walks of life, grant us through our intercession that walking faithfully in our vocation, we may constantly be example of shining light. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Your beauty was perfect in the splendor which I bestowed upon you. First reading, a reading from the book of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, 
make known to Jerusalem her abominations, and say, Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, Your origin and your birth are of the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite, and your mother an Amorite. And as for your birth, on the day you were born, your little strength was not cut, nor were you washed with water to cleanse you, nor rubbed with salt, nor swathed with bands. Your eye pitied you, no eye pitied you, to do any of these things to you, out of compassion for you. But you were cast out on the open field, for you were abhorred on the day that you were born. And when I passed by you and saw you weltering in your blood, I said to you in your blood, Live and grow up like a plant of the field. And you grew up and became tall and arrived at full maidenhood. Your breasts were formed and your hair had grown. Yet you were naked and bare. When I passed by you again and looked upon you, behold, you were at the age for love, and I spread my skirt over you and covered your nakedness. Yeah, I plighted my trot to you and entered into a covenant with you, says the Lord God, and you became mine. When I bathed you with water and washed off your blood from you and anointed you with oil, I clothed you with embroidered cloth and sh showed you with leather. I swathed you in fine linen and covered you with silk. And I decked you with ornaments and put bracelets on your arms and a chain on your neck. And I put a ring on your nose and earrings in your ears and a beautiful crown upon your head. Thus you were decked with gold and silver, and your raiment was of fine linen and silk and embroidered cloth. You ate fine flour and honey and oil. You grew exceedingly beautiful and came to regal estate, and your renown went forth among the nations because of your beauty. For it was perfect through the splendor which I had bestowed upon you, says the Lord God. But you trusted in your beauty and played the harlot because of your renown and lavished your hathletrize on your pass passerby. Yet I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth and I will establish with you an everlasting covenant that you may remember and be confounded and never open your mouth again because of your shame, when I forgive you all you have done, says the Lord God. The word of the Lord. Response or real psalm, your response shall be, Your anger has passed, O Lord, and you give me comfort. Your anger has passed, O Lord, and you give me comfort. Truly, God is my salvation. I trust, I shall not fear. For the Lord is my strength and my song. He became my savior. Your response? Your, Your anger, anger has, has passed, passed, O Lord, Lord and you and give you. me comfort. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples. Your response? Your, Your anger, anger has, has passed, passed O Lord, Lord, and you give me comfort. Declare the greatness of his name. Sing a psalm to the Lord, for he has done glorious deeds. Make them known to all the, all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Your response? Your, Your anger, anger has passed, O Lord, Lord, and you give, give me, me comfort. comfort. Please stand for the gospel acclamation.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Pharisees came up to Jesus and tested him by asking, Use one's wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that he who made them from the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. So they are no longer two but one. Join together. Let no one put asunder. They said to him, Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce? Uh, away? He said to them, For your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for unchastity and marries another commits adultery. And he who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If such is the case of a man with his wife, it is not expedient to marry. But he said to them, not all men can receive these precepts, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. He who is able to receive these let him receive it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise your Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today's reading invites us to reflect over our family life and also it speaks about the intention of God when he created man and woman when he brought them together he blessed them and he wanted this union to be unbreakable union till the end of their life. Today we see in our society lots of problem in the family life, in the married life, and every now and then, we see it is the divorces increasing in the church and in the society. For silly reasons, people are going for divorce. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I would like to compare this family life, marital life, to this Holy Eucharist. Holy Eucharist has different parts. We begin the Holy Eucharist in walking in the Trinity. And in the second part, we ask pardon for our sins. In the third part, we read the word of God. The fourth part, offertory. 
Fifth, consecration, the sacrifice. Sixth, the thanksgiving. Seventh, the departure. Go in the peace of Christ. Our family life should have all these aspects. We must begin the day in our family and the marital life in walking the Trinity as we get up. We must first offer the day to the Trinity, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And we offer the day's activities. Our children ask for the protection as they go out to the school for the work. Offer your works, activities. And pray for God's protection in that whole day. When the Trinity dwells in your family, dwells within you, you will experience the protection of God. Even if there are difficulties and problems, God will give you strength to bear those difficulties and problems. When there is the presence of God, there is a special grace in that person and in that family. And so you must always offer yourselves the, in the first hour to the Lord, invoke Trinity in your life, in the family life, and start your activities, the day's activities, with the Trinity. Carry the Trinity with you. We remember the incident of Jesus sleeping in the boat. When disciples and Jesus were traveling in the boat. There was a wind, strong wind. And the water was getting inside the boat. Immediately, the disciples, they remember their strength. With the knowledge that they have. They were trying to save themselves. They were trying to remove the water with the vessels, whatever they had. Because they were very strengthy people. They were all fishermen. They were experts in the sea. They knew how to escape when certain problem comes in the sea. Because they got this knowledge from their forefathers. And suddenly they remembered their knowledge and strength. Muscle strength and knowledge. Immediately they started with their muscle strength and knowledge. What happened? They start to sing. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I was narrating the incident that happened when Jesus and the disciples were traveling in a boat. And immediately these disciples remember their strength, try to utilize their knowledge their brain power, their muscle power, and at the end, 
we remember they could not save themselves using all this expertised knowledge the muscle power god has called us to this christian life through baptism to cooperate in his mission the mission is in exodus reading we have heard god wants all men to be back to him bring back to him human being was created by god in his own image and likeness should not be destroyed they must again come back to the lord and for this purpose jesus was sent and today jesus sends each one of us to carry on his mission in this world to bring changes in the hearts and minds of the people no one should be destroyed those who got image and likeness of god those who got breath of god god dwells in them they are people of god that is why mother mary when she appeared in 1858 in lourdes to benedict 19 17 in fatima lourdes uh, fatima in portugal to those three children she was asking the children do penance pray rosary for the conversion of sinners because god wants all to get converted and come back to him And so my dear brothers and sisters in Christ God when we see a bad husband is given to a good woman Now God wants through our devotion her prayer that she brings changes in the husband that is a mission We may not understand the intention of god god wants in each family when you find certain negative things which is against the will of god it is the responsibility of saving your partner through your prayer this is what monica did saint monica she prayed for the conversion of our son she prayed continuously for the conversion of our husband she prayed nothing happened prayed for many months nothing happened prayed for many years nothing happened but she did not lose her faith in god she had such a faith in god god will bring change in them and so she went on praying insisting because of our prayer before the death our husband was converted he became catholic because of our prayer our son augustine got converted and he is the saint of the catholic church my dear brothers and sisters in christ and so in the family there will be certain problem there will be weaknesses as pope francis says there is no perfection don't look for perfection rather try to understand offer your family to the lord and try through your prayer to bring conversion changes in your husband or husband in your wife and parents in your children and one thing is forgiveness is very very important unless you forgive god's grace will not flow in your family 
so that second aspect of the family life is forgiveness the third aspect of the eucharist is the reading the word of god when you read the word of god it brings joy to us word of god is a joyous message it brings peace it consoles us i can give lot of example how people experience the joy consolation and peace only just reading the word of god it heals the word of god heals us as we listen to the word of god as we read and listen to the word of god it delivers us from the bondages of the evil and as we read the word of god and meditate it meditate miracles will take place in your life and in your family life this is the experience of many reading the word of god because the word of god is powerful it is the word of jesus as we listen to the word of jesus and as we swallow the word of jesus miracles will take place changes will take place in our life changes will take place in our family life and so my dear brothers and sisters when we start to speak when we open our mouth the word that comes out from our mouth should be like that of word of god when we start to speak up to our partner it must give joy our words must give joy our must words must encourage them our words must give peace our words must console the partners and our words must heal them when there in tension difficulties when there is a nice words that comes out loving words that comes out from our mouth will heal them psychologically physically never the bad words should come out from our mouth our mouth when it when we have to when you speak from our mouth it has to be something like the word of god that people experience peace joy and happiness listening to us my dear brothers and sisters in christ the next aspect of the eucharist is the offertory in the offertory we offer ourselves to the lord it is a sign of offering ourselves to the lord in the same in the marital life in the family life you must offer totally to each one of you husband to the wife wife to the husband it should be total offering there should not be any doubt any suspicion when there is some secret there begins the problem in the family life there begins the cd work we start to see what she is doing what he is doing start to observe start to see some books what it what they are written telephone calls all this the cd work begins and so my dear brothers and sisters in christ when you say that you offer yourselves one another it should be total offering 
there should not be any secret in you whether it is in the aspect of the your own family life whether it was it is the money the bank accounts whether your activities whether your friendship whatever it may be there should not be any secret in your life when everything is clear then there will not be any doubt in each one of you and the devil will not have place to enter in your family this is very important total offering of oneself to another person with all its weakness and becoming totally open to other person only then that becomes a total offering my dear brothers and sisters in christ the next part of the holy eucharist is a consecration the sacrifice of the lord our lord knew for what purpose he was sent to this world by his father he knew he has to sacrifice his life he had to save the humanity he had to bring the humanity to the right relationship with the father he was sent as a sacrificial lamb and jesus was faithful to his mission jesus was obedient to his father and he was sincere to his father and to his mission my dear brothers and sisters in christ in every family life the fidelity sincerity faithfulness and sacrificial aspect should be there unless there is there is sacrificial aspect our life will not be happy our life and the family will not be grace filled grace filled family if husband or wife go on insisting it should happen happen according to my desire if there are adamant on certain aspect of the family life or certain things of the family life you know then there will not be the true understanding and slowly it can lead to quarrel and it can lead to destruction of the family and so my dear brothers and sisters in christ for the sake of the family for the sake of children when certain things happen in the family someone has to sacrifice someone has to bow their head and come down this is very important in the family life and so this sacrifice a lot of sacrifice is there in the family life sometimes a woman takes practically all the burden you know this is the reality of our family life we need to understand each other 
everyone must uh, take up the sacrifice for the betterment of our family life betterment of the children and to be witness to christ to the society and the church where you live if you go on quarreling if there is no sacrifice in your life we can never give never be the true witnesses of christ to the society and to the people through our family life we are called to preach the word of god to the people we are called to bring changes in the hearts and minds of the many other family which is in trouble which is in difficulty which is in sadness unless our family is with peace and joy and live with the lord we cannot save other families we cannot be true witness of christ to other families the next part of the holy eucharist is thanksgiving the prayer of thanksgiving we see in the life of jesus when we when he early in the morning morning is to go to the lonely place he is to pray and when he came down from the mountain when he start to preach his preaching become very powerful when he touched the people they were healed and many experienced the deliverance from the bondages of the evil many miracles were taking place these disciples were watching continuously whenever jesus is to go early in the morning to a lonely place and when he comes down and starts starts his activities lot of miracles are happening lot of changes are happening many things are happening and so the disciples also wanted to become powerful like jesus that is why they asked jesus jesus help us to pray help us to pray that our prayer also becomes powerful like yours and we see in the life of jesus the whole day he was carrying on the mission of the father and he was tired he was walking miles and miles in spite of all the tiredness he used to find a time to come back to the father and thank him thank him from the whole day that he gave him the grace the strength and he was being with him in carrying on his mission he never forgot to thank come back and thank every day this should be our prayer too jesus is a model for our life for our spiritual life for our prayer life as jesus every day was coming back to the father to thank him for all the blessings that he has received from the father in the same way my dear brothers and sisters as you come back late in the evening from your works and activities as your children come back from the school and the works remember to come together as a family to thank the lord because the whole day the lord was with you the lord protected you the lord has given you strength to work 
the lord protected your children and the lord brought you back safe and sound many a time my dear brothers and sisters we forget this aspect we are tired because of the whole day work and we are into different activities and come back again begin with some activities at home but we forget to come together as a family to thank the lord this is very important jesus is our model for our spiritual and prayer life we have to thank the lord at the end of the day come together as a family and this is very important the last aspect departure go in the peace of christ every day as we go to bed we go and sleep with the grace of god with the presence of god and with jesus then only we will experience the real grace in our life in our family life what are maybe the difficulties what are maybe the problems god will never allow us to think of separating each other think of going for divorce those who are faithful to the lord and those who really know the meaning for which god has called each one of us as husband and wife in spite of certain weaknesses in the partners it is a mission that god has given to bring change in which each in each one of us and so my dear brothers and sisters today as we celebrate this holy eucharist let us ask the lord to be faithful to him and the purpose for which he has united us and to carry on the mission of jesus through our family life amen sacrifice and yours may be accepted god the almighty father may the lord accept your sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory, of, and his glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church be pleased o lord to accept the offering of your church for in your mercy you have given them to be offered and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through christ our lord amen
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son, you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we to extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have elders worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Peter Machado our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Blessed Joseph, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be a coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but tell us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on the sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us this peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should run under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed to save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Praise the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now we are at our time. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen.